Hello, everyone. Good to see you again. I'm Anne Marie Green. And I'm Vladimir GT. I'm channeling my inner Mr. Rogers. Oh, so today. I see you with the zipper the cardigan. The zipper. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. Good to see you. It's really cold in here. Um, where it's not cold, Washington, D.C. It's heating up. Mm. The House Democrats, they're ramping up their impeachment inquiry against President Trump to historic levels. The House Judiciary Committee is taking the lead and holding its first hearing next Wednesday. Chairman Jerry Nadler has invited President Trump's lawyers to attend, but it's unclear if they'll actually show up. This comes as the New York Times reports President Trump knew about the whistleblower when he finally released Ukraine's military aid. Democrats believe the two are connected and could help imp the impeachment case. So Weijia Jiang has more on that. They take this perfect call and they want to impeach your president. Thank you. At a campaign Thank rally in Florida Tuesday night, President Trump railed against the impeachment inquiry, claiming it was falling flat with voters. Did you see what's happening in the polls? Everybody said, that's really bull****. But new polls show support for impeachment at 50%, 43% are against. Those numbers, which have remained steady since October, suggest weeks of public hearings did little to change public opinion. That might change next week with a new round of hearings. But the administration is House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler gave the president and his lawyers until Sunday to decide if they will attend the hearing. So far, the White House has refused to cooperate in the inquiry and blocked those in President Trump's inner circle from participating, even though Mr. Trump at one point tweeted he would actually like them to testify. Democrats say the White House froze U.S. military aid to Ukraine to pressure the country to investigate the Bidens. Last week, Sondland testified that I told him, quote, what do you want from Ukraine? I said, I want nothing. This is a quote. I want no quid pro quo. President Trump made those remarks to his EU ambassador on September 9th. But a new New York Times report says the president was briefed about the whistleblower's complaint in late August, so he would have already known there were concerns about a quid pro quo. Meanwhile, newly released transcripts from the only official to testify from the office that actually froze the aid revealed two White House officials resigned, in part because of concerns about withholding it. And Weijia Jiang is traveling with the president over this Thanksgiving holiday. She's with us now from West Palm Beach, Florida, which I guess if you got to travel, Florida's kind of nice because as you can't see, but Vlad's wearing his <laughs> indoor sweater, which means it's cold <laughs> even indoors here. I feel very wimpy because Anne Marie's got like sleeveless dress and I've got this like winter sweater on. <laughs> I'm cold. I'm cold. Yeah, That's I said your Mr. Rogers reference <laughs> and I uh, assumed it was chilly there. Hi, neighbor. I'm not <laughs> gloating or anything. Right. <laughs> but so, it is that. Listen, it is nice. Yeah. Um, so what can we expect from next week's House Judiciary hearing? How will this next phase of the impeachment process be different from uh, before when the House Intelligence Committee was in charge? So this is really a new phase for the impeachment inquiry. What we just saw uh, play out on television was the House Intelligence Committee sort of gathering uh, their evidence, right? We heard from several witnesses. We know that they have uh, so many pages of documents to sift through. And that process was to really collect the information, get a report together, and really lay out a case uh, for whether the president should be impeached based on the information that they collected. This phase will be very different. Um, the House Judiciary Committee will invite several legal experts to weigh in on how to analyze that evidence in the context of the constitutional framework. Um, they will also be talking about writing articles of impeachment and really uh, defining, again, high crimes and misdemeanors to, to sort out whether um, all that information that the, their, their colleagues discovered um, are rise to the level of you know writing these articles to move forward to impeach President Trump. So we expect to see a lot of legal experts um, chime in with their expertise to help lawmakers as they decide exactly what to write. Um, and Weijia, as you know, uh, the president almost on a daily basis uh, says that the impeachment process is unfair to him. He's called it a witch hunt. Um, he led, as you were in the room yesterday in the stadium, uh, a chant of BS, which I thought 
I mean, we always say this is unprecedented. It's never happened before. But a president of the United States leading a cheering crowd uh, to uh, swear in that regard with regards to the impeachment inquiry. So now he has this opportunity to provide a lawyer when the House Judiciary convenes next week. Are you hearing from the White House that the president will take advantage of this opportunity to have someone defend him in front of the House Judiciary Committee, or are they not going to participate? So not only can he send a lawyer or a team of lawyers, he himself has been invited to attend these hearings. And Chairman Nadler has given uh, his legal team the deadline of Sunday evening to reply uh, about whether or not they're going to have somebody representing the president at the hearing. So far, we don't know what the White House is going to do. Uh, just a short time ago, the press secretary, Stephanie Grisham, said they're still reviewing. And as uh, to be expected, she also continued the line of messaging that this is not a legitimate process anyway. Uh, what we do know is White House counsel Pat Cipollone will likely be in charge, take the lead of defending the president. And we know that outside lawyers have also uh, been brought on to sort of help the White House legal team um, as they prepare to defend President Trump. Um, but I think the burning question is who's going to be in that room on behalf of President Trump. He himself has said that he would like to submit written testimony and answer questions. Uh, he tweeted about that and then afterward really that fizzled, uh, probably at the advice of his lawyers to, to uh, stop that um, offer. So we don't know uh, exactly what they're planning, but they have until Sunday to decide. You know, all this talk of lawyers is making me think of the president. He's got a lawyer we haven't heard from. Uh, Rudy, Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani. Boy, did he come up a lot in testimony. <laughs> um, though the president says, look, he never sent Rudy Giuliani over to the Ukraine. <laughs> Everyone else says that not only did he do right. that, but, you know, uh, uh, Ambassador Gordon Sondland said that he was specifically directed that all things go through Rudy Giuliani when it comes to Ukraine. Yeah. What did he say to uh, Bill O'Reilly in that interview we did about Rudy Giuliani? Well, he's really trying to distance himself all of a sudden from Rudy Giuliani, denying that he ever sent his personal attorney to Ukraine to investigate the Bidens on his behalf. And Giuliani is actually backing that claim. He told CBS News that the president never asked him to go to Ukraine. But you're right. Um, a mountain of evidence suggests otherwise, including from Ambassador Sondland, who testified under oath that he was working with Giuliani to pressure Ukraine to investigate the Bidens and uh, the 2016 election at the direction of President Trump. Um, and so, it, you know, the president himself has sent mixed messages on this. In fact, um, just last week he said that, you know, he put Rudy in charge because he's such a great crime fighter. Um, and that's why he was doing, uh, you know, all these investigations um, to get to the root of corruption. So at this point, it seems like he's trying to put some space between them. But that's going to be really difficult considering everything else we know. Um, and finally, Ouija, let me ask you about this. Um, some really bombshell reporting from the New York Times. Uh, the New York Times is reporting that President Trump right. knew about the whistleblower complaint when he finally released Ukraine's military aid. That does sort of put a fly in the ointment of the president's defense. Right. Absolutely, because his new defense uh, since Ambassador Sondland testified was that Sondland said um, that during a conversation, he asked the president, what do you want from Ukraine? And who could forget the president reading from his notes um, his reply to that question, I want nothing. I want no quid pro quo. I just want Zelensky to do the right thing. I want nothing. I want nothing. Well, the dates matter here because that conversation took place on September 9th. Um, and that is several days after he reportedly found out about the whistleblower's complaint. And Democrats have already brought this point up, that the only reason he was so insistent about not wanting a quid pro quo and saying, I want nothing, is because he already knew that there were concerns brewing about what he was asking for. Um, and so it also raises a question about why the aid was ultimately released also in mid-September. Uh, was it also because he knew that, you know, a, a whistleblower had written this formal complaint laying out why uh, he or she believed the president was withholding the money 
for his personal gain. So the White House hasn't chimed in on this yet. We've definitely been asking. And I think the key question here, if they're not going to say, um, you know, talk about the motive for releasing the aid furthermore, they have to say when the president found out about the whistleblower's complaint, because that will uh, provide clarity to so much. And, and I think that's the one question that I have that has not been answered. Yeah, that is key. Um, Weija, thank you so much. Thanks, Weija. So if you feel like you're falling behind on anything related to the impeachment inquiry, head over to cbsnews.com impeachment to read the very latest.